Hello guys, and welcome to episode 5 of my Total War Three Kingdoms 8 Princes playthrough, playing as Surma Liang on very hard difficulty. Today we are going to be starting by hopefully attacking Surma Dai at Hangzhong. Uh, we have our heir here, ready to take that on. Can't do it this turn, you're going to have to wait till next turn to make it work, but either way. One thing I have noticed is that our income is a lot lower than it was before. We've lost, I think, about 2,000 almost on our income there. So I'm not sure if it was just being miscalculated before and having reloaded the save since the last episode, it's recalculated it at a different number. But we'll have to see. Because that's a lot lower. Maybe there's been a patch or something that changed some of the income. Oh, we need to spend some of our money on buildings, I think. Uh, I'm probably going to upgrade this. That will give us 200 extra income. And Zhang Yang, we do have an extra slot available. This does have plenty of income from industry, but I don't think there's any easy way to buff that up. The private workshops aren't really worth it anymore due to them reducing public order. So it may be best to either focus on an inn to get some more flat income from that. The only trouble with the inn is that it doesn't go up by 100 income every level like the industry building does. So it's not as worth having. The first level of it is, but otherwise no. I could go for a rural tax inspector or I could even actually go for the Confucian shrine. That may not be a bad idea. Yeah, let's do that. We'll do the Confucian shrine there uh, to give the plus 5%. Right, that's our money spent for the most part. Don't really want to spend any more than that anyway. All good, let's move on. For your consideration. So Chai would like to join our confederation or coalition. I think that's, yeah, this guy down the bottom here. Two of our guys would accept it. One is against it, only just. But I think that's a good idea. Your wisdom Secures our south even spirit. more. To war for glory. So my Yan would like us to join against the Jin Empire. I think they asked us that before, but we're not going to do that yet. Our armies are really not in the right place to make that happen. Oh, so our income's gone back up. Oh, I think it was the family estates. We're getting an extra 1.5k from the family estates that wasn't there before. I'm not sure why that disappeared last turn, but either way, so much I has joined our coalition, that's nice. A question of rank. The Ministry of Education has submitted their final review of the nine rank allocations. Upsettingly, one of your retainer's clients has received a lower rank than they expected. Your retainer asks that you correct this obvious mistake if they are able. They also offer, of course, to cover any necessary costs. So this is Surma Yang, our strategist in our main army. We'd lose 10 satisfaction for 10 turns on him, but we'd get the spiritual alignment, which is what we want. I don't really care about wealth alignment if we intervene. We do get 1,000 in the treasury, we get extra satisfaction for him. But corruption rampant? Your recent actions have encouraged corruption. I'm not really sure if it's worth it. I'm just going to trust the system. Hopefully his satisfaction is okay. We can just promote him anyway. The funny thing is we could just literally promote him if he was unhappy. So that's okay. All sorted. He's happy regardless. And we get extra spiritual alignment. Uh, if we continue pushing that, we do get the corruption but we do continue to get the good morale, which is nice, and the extra prestige. How far are we on the prestige? We need 150, and then we achieve Grand Prince. We get extra assignment slots, extra administrators, extra trade agreements. Okay, cool. Achieving this rank will give you a small chance each turn of being offered the Regency. 
This chance is increased by having good relations with the Jin Empire and by having high spirit or wealth alignments. That's really cool. Oh, so if you actually, like, I guess, make friends with the Jin Empire, you can just win the Regency by being helpful to the Empire itself. That's really cool. I like that mechanic a lot. So maybe we could do that, or try and do that at some point. If we get take care of Sema Wei and just continue getting bigger and bigger without attacking the Jin Empire, I think we'll be okay. Although the Jin Empire is probably not liking a lot of our actions against Sema Wei because they're friends. Uh, the Jin Empire, let's go to negotiate. I think they're currently neutral, yeah. The war atrocities against their friends is not good at the moment. Request cooperation from the Jin Empire. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, that's not going to happen. I should probably check if there's anyone else who would. He would, but we're probably going to take him over. Uh, Song Wei might. A welcome sight. He would require six food, money. The stone statue, the stone horse, intellectual vestures. Hmm. No. Uh, we could do it quite easily, but I think I'm going to hold off on doing that just yet. Alright. Time to take Hangzhong. I don't think their army's in the settlement. No. That's interesting. I wonder why they've done that. Either way, uh, this should be fine. Uh, if we auto resolved, we would win anyway, but we'll go ahead and fight this out ourselves in order to save us some men. Just in case we need to continue attacking them. If we win this battle, then we can probably vassalize this faction anyway. But we will see. Reinforcements are coming in to our right hand side. It might be worth just playing up to that because the garrison is relatively small. Whereas if I start over on this side, uh, maybe over here, then we could just batter them as they come in. We do have Imperial Guards now. These guys are pretty beefy, I think. And look at them in their armor and their big old shields. Very nice. All right. Yeah, we'll move over here. I'm going to have my trebuchets like so. I would do it from the right side having like the height advantage but the trouble with doing that is our trebuchets would have like a really hard time hitting from a distance because uh, they'd likely hit the hill. So I'd probably best to do it this side. Then we can just line up like so. Have those on the left, those on the right. Okay, let's start the battle. Put these into flammable rounds and uh, probably just smash those crossbows, please. Termaju. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I need to turn off jewels, I think. Oh, those were some strong hits onto the units nearby. Well, I'm just going to go into the shield wall there. Well, let's get our leader involved. Very good, that's right. I should have my crossbows hit their arch militias back there. Hit the peasant band. Wow, all of those shots from the trebuchet there completely missed. That was awful. Right, we do have the troops coming in from behind us. Uh, maybe worth just having a couple of my infantry 
turn around and engage those. Then we can use the cab to mop up the archers. That's 100% range block chance. Pretty legit. Right, let's make sure I'm hitting those with the trebuchets. I'm going to have a couple of these horses go straight for the archers. And then these two can charge into the back of these infantry engagements. Oh, we crushed that archer unit. Very nice. Crush that unit as well. Right, let's charge into the back of those guys. That's fine. Right, we pretty much crushed the garrison. That's good. I am wary of charging these archers because they're pretty close to the towers. Okay, good. They're all running. And it's fine. Right, if they've come forwards a little bit, we'll just make a quick charge onto them. We do have some range block chance here on our calves, so we can charge them without taking too much damage from their archers, but we'll see. Almost taken out their strategist, that's good. Make that out of turtle and throw them in there. Should probably have brought these guys out of turtle formation earlier as well. So they have their melee attack rate right back. Build their general, that's a good sh good start as well. I right, so go for Sema Shu. Make sure he dies. Oh no thank you, Mr. Trebuchet. Do not do that. <laughs> Alright. Need to get away from those towers. That was nearly one. Gonna bring these guys back. To the main engagement. That was a nasty charge. That's it, that's victory. Very good. Not sure I'm going to catch them before they run off the field, but I think we've sorted that out alright. Rubber chains could have been a little bit more effective, but oh well. Let's just wound him and then we're good. Wonderful.
I think I've got a pretty solid army composition there. Just need to slowly but surely like upgrade the units as, as we unlock them. Alright, we'll occupy it. Thank you very much. And then we'll talk to them and offer it them back. <laughs> so, hey Semadai, we just took your main settlement. Would you now like to become my vassal? <laughs> that is the question. Yes, yes. Talk. So peace. If you are my vassal. Nice. We don't even have to give him his main province back, but we're gonna do it anyway. So let's trade him the territory. Uh, what is it, Hangzhong? There we go. Give him the large town back. All yours, buddy. Now I just need you to give me a bunch of money, and we're all good. Uh, did, maybe he has some ancillaries. Nope. The AI never seems to have any ancillaries they can trade. Always, like, use them all up. It's crazy. Like, I reckon you should be able to ask them for ones they're using. It just costs you more. That'd be quite nice. Anyway, uh, we need to request regular payment. 500. How much can we get? we go down a little more, I might just be able to request a standard payment and get a decent amount as well. Let's see if we can tighten that up a little bit. There we go. 1,000 in cash, 265 a turn for 10 turns. They become our vassal, we give them their main province back. Agreeable terms. So they're basically playing us like extra tribute for being our vassal. Alright, cool. Miao Zhu has leveled up. I don't have any archers in his retinue, so com getting composure is probably not a good idea. I always assumed that composure gave uh, fire arrows to the whole army, but it's only the retinue. It would enable night battles, which is not too bad, but we're probably better off just going down Zeal for now, so we'll do that. I should probably cut out some Aju. I haven't really done this. He's got his own armor. I wonder if this stacks, the stone statue of Confucius. Giving us like plus 12 morale for melee cav, since we'll have two of them in the army. I wonder if that's actually a thing. Interesting if it is. We'll give him that for now. The morale is 70 on those. <laughs> it's crazy. Right, so we're up to 5,200 cash, which is good. Right, we're gonna put him into March. Actually, let's just go on the water. That'd be faster. Much faster. Right, we have to upgrade some stuff here. So we're getting the Harbor Trader. Uh, that gives income from commerce, so we'll go for the inn. There, that's good. Because we're going to own this province anyway. Uh, the second part of this is farmland, so it would probably be a good idea to get both the land development and the government support, plus the farmland, and then we can start to dismantle some of the other buildings that we're using elsewhere. Like here, for example. We can probably like convert it like this the one which sells the food I don't know it might just be better to like store the food and then sell it ourselves manually through trade through the diplomacy system I think that would probably give us more than doing it with the buildings anyway we have enough to upgrade Let's see what we want to do here So that's extra food production. We can push that to 100% so we get like an extra 8. 
Or I could do income from peasantry, but I don't know. I think I might just upgrade the Confucian Temple there. And honestly, I'm tempted to dismantle this. Yeah. Since we have the Secretariat. I should have built that actually in the last slot at Shangyang. Hmm. I guess I could build one at Bar actually. We could put a Judiciary there. Not too bad. We are going to be upgrading the settlement sooner than later though, I think. Yeah, we could just upgrade the settlements, get extra building slots, build the Judiciary in those. But yeah, that's both of our movies, um, armies moved, sorry, and uh, we can send out another spy, Serma Wenkai can maybe try again. Hasn't been having much luck at Serma Wei's court, so maybe we just put him in the Jin Empire. Alright. I'll do. Let's move on to the next turn. We offer peace for now. So my way would like peace. We're going to reject that. We want to take this his settlement so before we take peace. We should join as one. Sao Juan. They want to invite. Well, it doesn't matter because everybody else says no. Take this with our good wishes. Uh, Song Wei would like to join. <laughs> Everybody wants to join our coalition. I guess it's because we're quite powerful. Sema Chong led one the Jin Empire. Sema Dai succeeded by Sema Zhu. Action Regency. <laughs> oh, Sema Zhu also went out, so that's why it's become Shang. Shang Ji. Alright, Spy Dispatched. Great. That's a lot of people. A lot of people of merit. So, Chu Yi. Ambitious, energetic, and competitive. No, thank you. Temperamental, agile, and cowardly. No, thank you. Agile, ambitious. No, thank you. Populist, honest, and charitable. That's not too bad, but she's pretty old. She's only level one. Her uh, Shan Jing. Determined, vengeful, and energetic. I do like energetic. Tough, disloyal. Oh, so many bad traits. Agile, quiet, and unobservant. Extra resolve minus cunning. That's not actually too bad. He's not bad at all, actually. He is level 4 as well. Luan Dun. Concerned, determined, and intimidating. Dema Rao. And Shan Chong Ming. And the only one I like the look of at the moment is Shong Ju. But I think we're fine for now. I really need a new strategist for the next army. That's what I would need more than anything else. Right, we can get on to shore here and then attack the weapons craftsman in the next turn, I think. Alright, as for Sima Zhu, maybe we could just go and attack Sima Wei. Possibly. Or we could go and take out some Mo. Let's see. If we talk to Sir Ma Wei, we thought you dead. We're not going to actually do this, but I just want to check something. Can we not make them cancel their vassals? How do I make some our mole cancel that? Not even sure. Let's 
Because I'd like to cancel that and then attack them separately. And then vassalize them that way. But I can't do it whilst they're a vassal. So it's, Get this over with. It's, yeah, it's kind of awkward. They really want that deal, though. I mean, maybe I just take Chang'an. Might not be the worst idea. If we can keep chunking them, then they will take a favorable peace deal. We might even be able to vassalize him, which would be quite something. I don't think we're that far off. Being able to. Uh, we need to upgrade some stuff here. Uh, do I pop in the judiciary? Uh, let's do it. We'll do that for now. Because it's not like we need the food yet. Although my plan was to make this a food producing province. Once we get the farmland. Because we will annex some Mao at some point. Let's uh, upgrade this. And then we can put. That gives us another building slot. We can put a judiciary there. Alright, that's it. Let's move on. Oh, okay. So my way is coming down Battle to our... Not always the answer. The settlement's here. Or we might have to head back. Ah, sure, why not? Your wisdom reveals a kindred spirit. We want to be in their good books. I'm going to have to stop executing people from Semma Way, though. I'm going to have to try and remind myself not to do that. <laughs> I'm going to march back, deal with Semma Way. Liu Qi has leveled up. Uh, we'll go towards bravery, I think. Okay. And are we in range? We are. Oh, no, we're not. That's going to take a couple turns. I think I've done that before where I've landed there and it took a little while to get onto the province. Onto the settlement, even. It is very tempting to just like target all of my vassals onto Sir Mawe. Let's upgrade that again. Because I think the income from tributaries, even though it's like 1%, not too bad. Alright. Uh, that's everything. Our income's really nice right now. And I think we're going to stop paying other factions soon as well. Do I upgrade this? Because I was actually thinking of demolishing it. I might just save the money because then we can upgrade the settlement itself. But it looks like Zemma Way is going to Push to Shangyong. Honored to ally with you. We will invite Song Wei. Where's Song Wei? Oh, these guys. Ah, uh, sure. I guess. We are in concert this day. We shall burden you no longer. Uh, we will grant Sema Ying their independence. They are a trusted friend. <laughs> we will reject that. Very well. Goodbye. <laughs> I love the way they willingly, in a diplomatic way, became our vassal. And now they're just like, eh, maybe that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> they're regretting it. Alright, Sema Wenkai was recruited by the Jin Empire. Nice, that's good. Action developments. 
the canon of Buddhism. The Dajang Jing is said to be the interpreted words of Buddha himself. Although broad in their teachings, it generally advises seeking merit and perfection through study, wisdom and compassion. A new year begins, a new opportunity to steer people toward their destiny. An ancient text, after many nights spent poring over ancient texts, your scholarly court noble discovers a revealing and educational piece from the era of the Warring States. That's extra experience for Sir Ma Yang. Very nice. All right, can we get to Shangyong? Do I need to march? I do. Ooh, this is going to be tough. I think he's got some pretty legit units. This could be... Yeah, this could be rough. You choose spearmen, choose infantry. They look decent. Got a good amount of archers. Got a couple of cataphracts. Chang Pengju. Have a look at him. Greedy, clumsy, and populist. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, guys. Terrible traits. We need another reform choice. Uh, I really want to get to level 3. Probably we can't be that far. Well, this is what we'd need, right? The next rank. So we are pretty far, actually. Hmm. Well, we'll go towards uh, minus 20% character salary. That's actually quite a lot. Because at the moment we pay... 1.2k a turn in salary, so take away 20% of that, which is, you know, about 240 odd. I don't know if my math is correct there, but we'll get a nice chunk of money back either way. Take the weapons craftsman, thank you very much. It looks like it's just been upgraded. I'm just going to delegate that one, because we don't need this army to be like healthy. And they actually only lost 500 men, so that was a good shout. Right, we'll take that. Thank you very much. Legendary Weaponsmith. Don't mind if I do. Right, he's leveled up. Give him composure now. That's great. Uh, let's give him those. All right. We're up to 8,000. Uh, let's upgrade our settlement here. Upgrading all these settlements will inevitably cost us a lot of food. I think we're going to go for the workforce distribution office here because we do have the pine woodcutter camp. So that will increase our income from peasantry. And that will give us a place where we can boost that with assignments. Speaking of which. We can do plus 30% income from industry. Nice. Can we do that here? We can. I think this is the best place for income from industry. They're all pretty close. I think Shang Yang, definitely the best. That's going to be an extra 30%. Very nice indeed. Alright. Everything's done. Once again, we have moved on to the substantial jurisdiction. Satisfaction is high. Uh, we have the popular going on at the moment, and we have focused, which is great. I think it may be time to take on Sir Ma Mal, like, annex him. Let's see what the diplomatic repercussions would be of doing that. Glad to see you. Annex. So, Sir Ma Ying wouldn't like that too much. I mean, all of our vassals, basically. I think most of them would be okay. Uh, Huang Xin would be the one that would be the most risky, but I think that's okay. Annexing a vassal is an act of treachery condemned by everyone. Okay. 
Do we go from trustworthy to untrustworthy? Hmm. Is it worth doing? I think we're going to we for now. Sacrifice freedom for survival. All right. That's the confederation. Two factions have become one. Uh, commander is secured. Cheng Ling. All right. Nice. Uh, so I need to disband these guys. Oh, and that's actually really good for us. We have a couple of strategists. I'm not sure how good they are. This one's formidable, superstitious, and patient. Oh, those aren't actually too bad. That's fulfilled, selfless, and concerned as well. Yeah, these actually have relatively good traits. They're not traits that improve cunning, but they're not like negative traits. And she's kitted out nicely. What about him? Oh, he's not so good. But he had has some nice traits for being an assignee. So I think that's what we're probably going to do with him. Let's just recall this retinue. And hopefully we can keep them happy. Sir Ma Mal himself is not very happy at all. He might leave. Which is fine. I could just kick him out. Honestly. He is disloyal, aesthetic, and energetic. I mean, the disloyal one is just horrible. But she's selfless, enigmatic, and disciplinarian. Just her traits are in a really terrible position. She's fine. We can keep her. I might actually boot one of the other ones. She's the one we definitely want to keep. Maybe I could boot him. So in Mao, we could just get rid of. He's got a really nice book there that I might want. Anyway, uh, we're gonna recall him. Recall him. Alright. I will take that. Thank you very much. And I'm probably gonna take that from you. What's this? That's nice as well. Thank you very much. And that is nice. The Iron Archer plus six expertise. And we can take that. Thank you very much. So we can reassign those to generals that are in the field. So we'll give him one. And just kit them out really nicely. That'd be good. And we're still domain focused after doing that, which is quite funny. So we have five commanderies. And now what I'm going to go into diplomacy, we can probably get some more trade agreements. Uh, so yeah, nice. Um, Let's see, trading with Shan Luijin, we could do that, although I'm likely to attack her soon and give that to Bian Bing. So, not so sure about that. Let's Our see pleasure. what we want to do here. A trading with the Jin Empire would probably give us quite a lot of money. And some decent relation with them. A regular payment of 1,500 a turn for 10 turns. Are you having a laugh? Uh, I would just rather make a payment or trade an ancillary. How much would that be? Yeah, that's fine. We'll ask for some money. Okay, never mind. That'll do. A reasonable offer. And we'll trade agreement with the other one as well. Our new vassal here. And that will be all of our trade slots. Not you done, again. which is nice. I, I might give her one of these as well. So it is agreed. Great. That's going to make us even more money. Brilliant. We're up to 4,491 a turn. Fantastic. And this gives us loads of food. Like, absolutely tons. This is, this is built up really nicely, Zheng Ling. We've got the farm supply storage. We've got the food trader, which we probably turn, out, turn around to the irrigated farms. Because uh, then that will boost trade no end, or not trade, food. Um, in which case we can then demolish this irrigated farm and build something else there. So that's fantastic. That's really good. We can upgrade that. We just took that one as well. 
Nice. Uh, we're in a really, really strong position now because we've got a good base of land. We've got loads of vassals and we've got a strong coalition going on, even though my vassals at the moment probably don't like me as much as they did. And our uh, reliability rating has definitely dropped on down. But uh, all well and good otherwise. Um, I'm going to have probably Sir Ma Leong waddle his way towards Sir Ma Wei or even Sir Ma Mo. Maybe we go for Sir Ma Mo. Because I'd like to get it to a point where we make some our way weak enough that we can just vassalize him. I'm probably going to go for that. Let's end the turn. We would be no threat to you. Sama Zhong would like a non-aggression pact. Where is he? Oh, all the way over there. I'm sure. I guess that's fine. Can we like request payment for that? No. All right, that'll do. Our talks have finished. I'm happy with that. Tell us your thoughts. Bai Jin, as our vassal master, is asking them to help defend against Sir Ma Yu. Where is Sir Ma Yu? Bai Jin is here. So Sir Ma Yu... Where is that? Over here? I mean, sure. It is settled. We can do that. But I'm not sure why they declared war on my vassal. Your hold over us must end. Oh, Bajin is declaring their independence. Attitude is very negative. Unfavorable deals against us. Mine is for annex per vassal. Personal rivalry. Treaties with enemies. Okay. Well. Guess we gotta go grind them into the dust. <laughs> so now we're at war with Sir Ma Yu for no reason because we got called into the war due to Bai Jin. Hmm. Okay. Sign a peace treaty with Sir Ma Yan, that's fine. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on. Sir Ma Yu Shang. Sir Ma Rao, a couple of noble births there. Sparring partners, Sir Ma Mao. Relation deepens with Sir Ma Zhao. Alright, we've got the relationships and rival stuff that we don't really worry about. Uh, character developments, they're all ready for duty. Alright, cool. Let's have a look, shall we? This guy is really not happy at all. What could we do about that? I'm probably just going to tell him to leave. The Marmal. Just going to be like, yo, dude, get out of here. <laughs> yes, then we don't have to pay him. Okay. So, looks like what we're going to do is jump onto the water down here. And go sail round to good old Jiangling and then go to Jiangxia from there. I could also set up another army. That could be an idea. I might do so at uh, Shenyang actually. We could raise a new army here. We have Sir Ma Zhang. Why can't he? Is he currently an assignee? He is. All right, we'll have to stop him from doing that. That's fine. We don't need that anymore anyway. So we'll have him lead an army. We're going to continue along to trust, reach, and flexibility with him. We'll have Surma Asui come with him. And then we'll also have... Lady Wu the issue. Okay. Alright, let's sort out our followers and accessories. So my young can have that. There you go. And we'll give her Shan Shu this one. Very good.
Anything else that we can hand out? Ah oh, yes, I can give him the Iron Archer for extra expertise. Although I'll give it to this guy because he's actually an administrator. So the extra expertise will give the extra minus, minus construction cost to that province that he looks after. That's nice. We really need some new weapons. So I'm hoping this uh, weapons craftsman starts pumping out some decent weapons for us. I think we do have a lot of weapons for champions and also vanguards, but not for sentinels or even strategists. Although strategists, it's very hard to get weapons for them. I think normally pretty hard to come by. Like weapons that have cunning on them. I could give him the dull iron carapace, but I think I'm just going to give him the warrior's reinforced leather. And the wooden dog is okay, but I could give him the stone horse. Or actually I could give him the accessory that we're going to get back from Leo Ki. Alright. Well, unfortunately, guys, it has been my time, so I'm going to leave it here. In the next episode, I'm probably going to be having a battle with Sir Ma Wei at some point. And we're also going to be getting Sir Ma Liang to head towards Bai Jin and deal with him. I'm going to have to also check up on my other vassals because I don't think they're liking us too much. Malren, definitely not. One's thoughts must be kept as but sharp hopefully as that will sort itself out over time. I could probably send him money or something to make him happy. We'll see. We've got a lot of extra money to spend anyway. But yeah, that's it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.